Morning everybody. Welcome back to Ozark Mountain Goats. It's been a while since I've been on here and uh, I put a thing out on uh, Facebook asking folks if they would like to see us make uh, cheese. So today I'm putting together a goat milk cheddar. Uh, originally I got the recipe from uh, Ricky Carroll's book. Uh, she's the one that owns uh, New England cheese making something, I don't know, products or something, uh, supplies I think, maybe. Now what I'm using today, I'm going to make a, a four gallon batch. So I'm going to be using animal rennet, I'm going to be using mild lipase and mesophilic uh, culture. It's C101 and you can get all this stuff from uh, New England cheese making supply. So anyway, um, we're going to start now. Oh, and I want to mention my press. There's a got this new press. My other press, I was having some pretty sour experiences with it because I never knew exactly what weight I was putting on the cheese as I was pressing it. So I got this outfit. It's a Dutch uh, cheese press. I got it also from New England and I'm going to be using it today with weights that I got off of Eb uh, no I got them off of Amazon and they're just little round weights five pounds each and I will get into the explaining the operation of the press once we get there but anyway for now I'm going to dump all this into the double boiler that we're using here and then uh, we're going to heat it up to Let's see where I had last time. 85 degrees and uh, then we'll go from there. I forgot to mention that I'm going to use calcium chloride in the milk. Um, I've read different things on it whether you can or you shouldn't or or this type of milk or that type. For goat's milk and if it's been stored cold I, I use it but uh, you can use your own judgment on that and just follow the instructions on the uh, bottom. So I'll add that now while it's cold and stir it in. And everyone can read about calcium chloride and what it does for milk and use your own judgment on that. I, I have tried it both ways and here lately I've been using it. So we'll see how this all turns out. Okay, well the milk's starting to heat up. I, I've got my lipase in a water solution and you can follow the directions on the bottle on how much you need to use. Lipase is one of those things that you use in uh, a lot of Italian cheeses and um, it gives it that aroma and sharp taste and I like it. It makes a young cheese really flavorful from the very get-go. So I'll be adding it right now. Okay, I'm up to 85 degrees with my milk, so I'm going to open up the culture and I'm just going to sprinkle it on top. Now I'm going to let that hydrate for five minutes and then I'm going to stir it in. Okay, I'm stirring the uh, 
culture in now. It's been five minutes. And after I get it stirred in good, I'm going to let it ripen for 30 minutes. Okay, folks, I'm getting ready to add my rennet. It's diluted according to the bottle, uh, what you're supposed to do. And I'm pouring it through a spoon. And then I'm going to stir it in real well with the up and down motion. I might add, if you see me take out the thermometer there, keeping that temperature at 85 degrees. As soon as I get this stirred in well, it will be left alone, not moved, not messed with for one hour. Okay, time's up. We're going to check now to see if it's got a clean break. And Joe, bring the camera over here and watch the end of the thermometer here. And if you noticed, uh, uh, it's right at 85 degrees. Oh, yeah. Look at that clean break. Perfect. That's what you're looking for. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I like to start in the middle, go down come across half inch apart thereabouts Okay, we're going to cut the we're going to cut horizontally now with the cheese. Now, for those that don't have a cheese harp, you can use your spoon and go through here and every oh, try to go down about every half inch and cut it this way, back and forth. Um, this is what I use. It's a cheese harp, and I put this in, and then I will slowly move it around this way. makes life a little simpler when you've got this uh, thing makes the curds a lot more uniform too yeah makes them quite a bit more uniform now I'm going to give it a gentle stir here as you can see what we got just a little bit Now I'm going to let the curds kind of heal, kind of heal on the outside so that when you go stirring them, they don't break all to pieces. So 10 minutes and then we'll come back. Now we have to start raising the temperature. You're going to raise the temperature up to 98 degrees over a period of about 30 minutes, no more than uh, two degrees every five minutes. And, uh, we're going to gently stir them to make sure they're not matting together. Once we hit that 98 degrees, we're going to maintain that 98 degrees temperature for 45 minutes. Making sure that there's no big clumps. If there is, kind of break them up to be about the same size as the ones that are smaller. Okay guys, well the cheese uh, is heating up slowly and I go over and stir it just every few minutes 
and make sure that nothing is clumping. Um, this is a cheese that I just got finished with, and the reason it looks dark is because in place of some of the salt, I used hickory smoked salt from Tones, and uh, I added it. And to smell this, oh man, it smells good. Anyway, I'm getting ready to wax. This is my regular wax uh, hot pot, or what do you call these things? Crock pot. Crock pot. I don't and uh, what I've done is I've chilled this just a little bit so that when I dunk it in and pull it out, it, it uh, cools down quickly. So here I go. I found uh, putting it in to a crock pot and doing it this way it comes out a lot smoother than trying to paint it on with a brush or using a little pot heating it on the stove. just a little bit. I'll give it two or three coats. You notice I spread wax paper down here because if you get it on your counter or on anything it, it don't <laughs> it don't like coming off very easy. I'll redo you. And there you go. I'll let it cool a little bit, put it on my plastic mat inside my cheese cave, and get to stirring. Okay guys, we're down here in Josie's soap making room, and I wanted to show you the cheese cave real quick. It's getting pretty full. Come over and take a look at that. The cheeses I've made. And those on the bottom are the ones that we've cut and tried, right? Yep. Anyway, guys, um, if you guys, I know there's a lot of people out there that make soap. And some of them do a great job. We got good friends that do it. Um, but if you get a chance, go to our website, OzarkMountainGoats.com. Check out Josie Soap and uh, let her know what you think of them. And that's a Japanese cherry blossom. I'm going to show this here. This is uh, the sticker we've got. And uh, it's all sealed, shrink wrapped, ready to be bought and brought to you. I'm showing the back. On the back, it shows the ingredients and what it is. Cool.
Marie. Okay, I'm gonna drain drain the whey uh, off the curds for a couple minutes, and then I'm gonna put uh, get rid of the whey that's in the pot, add the curds back to the pot, and then I'm gonna add the salt according to the recipe. All right, now I'm going to add half of my salt, stir it, and then add the rest of it and 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 stir it in. cool thing about this press when when you get one is it has instructions here on your weight it has notches here and the weight changes depending on where you put the weight at I rigged up a little thing here so it's a little easier to add a weight to this and uh, it gets hooked on this here on the very end the furthest away five pounds will put a plunger force of 20 20 pounds on it and that's what we're going for oops I'm going to have to adjust this right off the bat does it go high enough no. to get the right. mold underneath it I'm going to eventually uh, put a seal on this press, uh, polyurethane or something, something that I can wipe it down with because I may at one point want to try some blue cheese and with that you want to be able to clean your equipment super good. And it will. There, I'm going to put that just to help take care of the distribution of it all. here this white will clear up it's just way draining off right now and once that happens you'll be where you want to be this is a 20 pound or a 5 pound weight with the way this whole system works you're getting uh, 20 pounds of, of pound pressure going uh, on the cheese and that's what you want okay we're gonna uh, press this now for 15 minutes at 20 pounds of pressure
I'm going to take this out. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to redress it. I'm going to press it again at 30 pounds of pressure, which is 10 pounds of weight on the first closest notch. You got to be gentle when you're first taking them out after the first pressing because it's still pretty, pretty tender and will come apart pretty easy. Do you want me to put this down and get it ready for you? Kind of. Yeah, let's start knitting it together. Mm-hmm. Now always, when doing it, take your extra cloth and put it up in here, because otherwise it's going to soak up any way that, that drips off, and then that's not good. Move it to the first notch. We're going to uh, press this now at, what was it, 30 pounds of pressure? 30 pounds of pressure for one hour. Okay, I'm going to take it out of the press and flip it again. good one of the things that I've learned when making cheese is if you put too much weight on them and it's not right your cheese will be dry and uh, just not very good I gotta put 50 pounds of pressure on there. So I'm putting, on the first notch, I'm putting the 10 pound weight. And on the second notch, I'm putting the, the uh, five pound weight. That gives me a total of 50 pounds of pressure on the plunger. So that is sit here for 12 hours and we'll show you tomorrow what we got. Morning guys, it's the next morning and we're going to unmold the cheese this morning and see how she looks. Okay, it looks pretty good. It's got a few wrinkles in it, but nothing too bad. Okay, I'm going to take this into the other room. I'm going to put it on this plastic here and uh, let it air dry. It usually takes two to three days. Get it, it gets a nice kind of, not a crust, but it, it's not leaking any fluids. And um, every day, a couple times a day, I'll switch it back and forth. Uh, so that any liquids on the inside will disperse completely through the whole uh, cheese instead of just compacting into like the bottom or whatever. Anyway, that's it. 
Also, I might add, if there's enough footage, and I'll have Joe check that, from a previous cheese I made, I'm going to show you the extended version of making a cheddar, more of a traditional cheddar. And uh, you'll see that if you hang on. Anyway, for now, I'm going to sign off, and we'll catch you later. So the curds are back in the pot right now. And we're going to let them sit for 15 minutes. Um, if you were making Colby, right now you would salt it, put whatever you want in it, uh, herbs or whatever, and then stick it in the press. This is the difference between Colby and cheddar. Now becomes the process of cheddaring it. And what I'm going to do now, because I want this flavored, I'm going to go ahead and add some cayenne pepper to it because I want it to be cayenne pepper uh, cheddar. So I'm going to add some of that, stir it in, and then it's going to sit for 15 minutes. Is that a tablespoon? Yep. I'm adding about one and a half tablespoons because I want it spicy. Now, we'll let her set 15 minutes. Okay, what I'm going to do now is start the cheddaring process. And basically, to do the cheddaring process, you can either do it, you can do it a couple ways. One is to just keep doing this for two hours. Or I bought a pH meter, and when I hit a certain point on the pH meter, um, that's when I stopped cheddaring. The pH meter tests acidity for me and uh, when I'm starting it now it's like 5.8 and I want to get it down to 4.2 which means the lower the number the higher the, the acidity so that's what I'm working for right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut Jeff, can you see inside here? What I'm going to do is cut slabs, small slabs, and it's still pretty fragile at this point. The reason you don't scald it like you would Colby or other cheese, uh, you know, making other cheese, is because you want that bacteria. The good bacteria, the culture in it to keep working. Now I'm going to pull them up. You got to be gentle because it's, it's really kind of a pain, but it's the reason most people don't make cheddar. because it's a lot harder to do. Oop. One of the reasons it's breaking apart right now is because I crumbled it up so I could add the pepper to it. Normally you can get this out Pretty easy. I'm going to flip it over and put it right back in. Right now we're in the cheddaring process. So basically you're letting everything work. And I'm going to Turn the heat on just for a few minutes to get our water warm back up because it needs to be in here where the all the good bacteria can keep on working. So I want to get the temperature up a little bit because it's chilled down just sitting around. Now I'll just let it sit for 15 minutes.
Okay, I'm going to check my pH, and I know it's not even close yet, but I will put it in, and it is reading 5.83, and I want this down to 5.2. So we got a ways to go. Because I've added the pepper to it and crumbled it up, it's a little more aggravating than normal. Um, basically what I'm doing here is just flipping it, letting it compress, and uh, letting it work. As it works, it's getting those acids and stuff down to where they need to be. Five point seven five, and uh, before I drained it, it was about five point eight, I think. So every time you drain it and get rid of some of the liquid and heat it up, which I'm just going to heat it enough to to get it back to where it was. Want to keep it warm so the bacteria can work. Um, but don't about overheat 100, it. About 100 degrees. About 100 degrees. And uh, set it for another 15 minutes and then do it again. Now normally you can cut this stuff into slabs and just take it out each slab, flip it over. And then I've seen professionals, they take, they'll have a sloped big steel vat and it's sloped. And they'll stack that cheese on each side layer after layer and let it drain and they keep flipping and rotating anyway we're good there for another 15 minutes five point six eight Back in the pot, back on the stove. The last batch we made uh, took about seven hours for a five pound uh, wheel of cheese. So put it in your schedule. Okay, the cheese is just about where we want it. So now I'll show you the next process. We have to cut this up into little tiny pieces. As you can see, the texture's like, like chicken breast. In the factories, they have a machine. They put the cheese in there and it shreds it into a billion little pieces. I'm going to add my salt here, add a little, and then stir it up. So I put in a total of three. And we'll mix it up good, and at this point, it will go into the mold and be pressed. 